And when my time on earth has come And I hear you say, well done I will sing your praises forever And it still won't be enough And it still won't be Hallelujah. What an awesome 24 hours we have had in the Holy Ghost. Amen. Just want to let you know in the event, if you've missed any of it, all of it is archived on our Facebook channel and our YouTube channel. If you just look up Jesus Church of Watertown, you should be able to find it. And uh, Or if you go to the website, jesuschurchsd.org, and then you could click on one of the social links. And if you ever want to re-listen, because there has been so much that has been given, that's been imparted, that's been preached, and that will be accessible, and then it will be uploaded on podcast as well, so it's all free, there's no charge, nothing like that, and uh, for all those that registered, thank you, that helps us in preparation, uh, just for headcount wise, and uh, we're just glad to be able to host a free event where the people around the region can come together, so we have a focused gathering for this area, believing that there is a revival in North Dakota, South Dakota, Nebraska, Iowa, Minnesota, so on and so forth, Wisconsin and Kansas. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Following this service, you are more than welcome to uh, go downstairs for some fellowship. Uh, there's going to be some refreshments. Uh, there's going to be some pizza, uh, no charge whatsoever. But if you would like to fellowship, uh, you're more than welcome to stay, but if you want a little better meal than Little Caesars, well, it's outside the walls of this building, and you are more than welcome to explore the wonderful community of Watertown, a lot of great dining options, uh, but if you just want to interact and socialize, get something to drink and eat, there's a lot of great time downstairs in Jesus' name. If uh, you need to use the restroom, we're blessed with a fantastic facility, but the people that built this building, the Episcopalians, they did not feel a need for many bathrooms. And so there's only one up here, and there's two downstairs. Uh, so if you don't like to wait in line, I'm sorry, but you can go outside. There are four outhouses, and you are more than welcome to go there. But as you stand together, we want to welcome everyone in the house of the Lord. We are so blessed by all that we have heard, all that we have felt, all that we have experienced 
And it's only going to get better. Because we serve a God who is eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God. And we're going to pray for the next few moments as this worship team is getting ready. I wonder if we can lift up holy hands without wrath, without doubting. And we can call on the name that is above every name. Come on, God sets you free from Egypt. So with a high hand, an open hand, in defiance to the prince of the power of the air, now as a child of God, you have the authority. Come on, lift your hands in authority. Lift your hands in confidence. In the name of Jesus, I come against anything, Lord, that would try to quench your spirit. I defy depression. I defy anxiety. I defy suicide. I defy hopelessness. I defy despair. I defy every contrary spirit, Lord, that is against your Holy Spirit. Jesus, have preeminence in this house. Come on, release your voice. Release your voice. Release your voice. Let there be a high praise. The high praises of God in your mouth and a sharp two-edged sword in your hand. Hallelujah. Let's worship the Lord.
it to release your voice into the atmosphere. Come on, walls are shattering. Chains are breaking. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Come on, every hand lifted, every eye closed in the building. Would you lift him up in this place? Hallelujah, Jesus. I may not know how you're working it out, but God, I believe in you. I believe in your truth. You I believe that we love you, Jesus. Authority yes, God. To speak life where there is death, you've given us power over every circumstance. God, when I speak your name, chains will break and never
If we can lift holy hands in this house, come on, speak the name of Jesus, the one that you're going to get the victory in. In the name of Jesus, victory. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we have that authority. In the name of Jesus, no weapon formed against the church of the living God is going to prosper. The gates of hell will not prevail. The gates of hell will not prevail against the church of the living God. So, God, I give you thanks. I give you praise. Lord, your word is true. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, if you love the Lord, would you give him a round of applause? Come on, would you give God a mighty hand clap? And louder than your hand clap, can you accompany that with your voice? Let your voice elevate louder than your hand clap. Let your voice be louder than your applause. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Father. I love you, God most high. You're worthy, Jesus. You're worthy, Jesus. Ha! Ah, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Turn to a couple of people around and tell them it's done. Come on, tell them it is done. My city will see revival. It is done. We have a promise for our city from a God who cannot lie. We have a promise for our region for a God who cannot lie. And everybody say, in Jesus' name, hallelujah, Jesus. You may be seated as our ushers make their way forward. We're going to continue worshiping the Lord in our giving. Anything that you give, we are most grateful for. It all simply goes to trying to support this event. We don't charge any registration, but there is plenty of things that we must purchase in making this event happen. And if you give, we thank you. If you don't, we all still love God, and we're glad to be here together in Jesus' name. Amen. There's not going to be any introduction of our preacher after this song. He's just going to come up as the song and worship is coming to a conclusion. We're so thankful to have Marcus Baptiste with us, who I believe is a prophet of God. I believe Bobby Wade is a prophet of God. I believe in fivefold ministry. I believe in apostolic authority. And I am so thankful, so thankful for what has happened, them being here. I know that we definitely were excited about having Brother Stone King and Chris Green, but things happen, and you just pray for Brother Stone King and his health. And Chris Green, he was going to be here as well, but he had an emergency. He pastors in Dripping Springs, Texas. There was a death in his uh, congregation. And then his father, he found his father on the floor, writhing in pain, had to rush him to the hospital. It's been a pretty intense 48 hours for Chris. If you could keep him in your prayers. We love the Greens. They have been a critical part of the formation of Great Plains Conference. And uh, in Jesus' name, God willing, we'll see them next year. But we're going to pray that God's will be done. As we worship one more time, can we lift up hands together and pray that the will of the Lord will be done. Jesus. 
we open our hearts and worship unto you. And as we worship you, God, break this fallow ground of our heart. So when the man of God comes up here, Lord, that our heart is ready to receive the word, that that seed can be planted in good ground, fertile ground, that it doesn't have to take, Lord, strain and effort to get that, Lord, into our hearts. But we're ready and broken in worship. Lord, we thank you and we praise you and we magnify you and we lift you up. With your voice, would you begin to lift up the name of Jesus? With your voice, would you begin to lift up the name of Jesus? Hallelujah, Father. Let's worship.
Amen. Lift him up just a little bit longer. Just a little bit longer. I just need you to lift your voice all across this place. Let's just honor him for a moment. Can you honor him right now? Just a little bit longer. Can we just sustain that just for another 30 seconds? Can we just honor him right now? Let's just sit there for a little bit. I just want us to stay right there. We'll move on as we need to, but can we just stay in that place of worship? Can you just lift both your hands and just acknowledge him just for a moment? Thank you, Jesus. time can you just tell him thank you thank you Jesus thank you Jesus thank you Jesus thank you Jesus thank you Jesus, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. amen amen we got to learn to sustain those moments I think sometimes we leave a lot earlier than he was wanting us to. Sometimes you just got to wait and see if there's more. Amen. Amen. If you're thankful for what you're feeling in this house, why don't you put your hands together unto the Lord? Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 I give God honor. I give God honor for what he's going to do tonight. Amen. Quite obviously, I'm not Chris Green. Amen. Uh, I'm a little bit taller. Amen. But, uh, but uh, he, is, uh, he is powerful, and I thank God for him. Can you guys hear me? Uh, I'm a sound team and a media's team, worst nightmare. Uh, I won't give them texts and titles, and I don't stay behind the pulpit, and my voice will start off soft, and then I'll scream a little bit, and it's just, it's a wreck, so you pray for them tonight. Amen. Uh, I, I know this is probably going to be a little bit different for, for most of you, uh, but I, I've been through a dying phase, 
and I thank God for it, and uh, that has allowed me not to be constrained uh, to the opinions of man. And what that liberates you to do is to be obedient to God. Amen. And uh, I believe there's something specific here uh, for this region, uh, and I kind of want to want to jump into that. And so the format might be a little bit different, but I believe you guys are spiritual enough to handle that. Amen. Amen. I believe you guys are spiritual enough to handle that. I know there's uh, various states that are represented here, uh, but before we move forward, I want to give honor to the leadership of this specific church. Can you put your hands together for them? Your bishop, pastor, family supporting teams. Amen. 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 Look at somebody next to you. Tell them you look good. Tell them you look good. Amen. 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 How many of you guys shop with Amazon? That's just about everybody. Uh, if you order something off of Amazon, typically the package is the same. Every once in a while, Amazon will deliver something in a unique package. Uh, I don't throw the package out uh, because I understand the package isn't what matters. It's what's in the package that matters. Uh, the delivery system is going to be a little bit different tonight, uh, but there's something in there, and I need you guys just to stay with me, and if you will, we'll go somewhere. Is that okay? Is that okay? I think we're going to have a good time tonight. Amen. Go to me to the book of James. I give honor to Brother Wade. I don't know where he's at. I give honor to him. How do you guys? Oh, right in front of me. <laughs> Give honor to him, give honor to him, uh, and the blessing he's been to our organization, churches. I thank God for him. James chapter 2, amen. Amen. And I'm going to start in verse 23. I'm going to start in verse 23. If you're there, say Amen. Amen. James chapter 2, verse 23, and the Bible says, And the scripture was fulfilled, which saith Abraham believed God, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness, and he was called the friend of God. You see then how that by works a man is justified, and not by faith only. Uh, I, I, needed something, uh, I needed something just to give you to hold on to for the next few moments, and hopefully after you leave this place, but... Uh, if you just want to hold on to the title, God's plan for your city, God's plan for your city, uh, you can set your Bibles down. Uh, we're going to pray one more time. I just want you to grab the hand of the person that's next to you. Uh, and I just want us just to lift our voice. If you can, can you just pray in the spirit just for a few moments right now? Thank you, Jesus. Just a little bit further. Can we just pray in the spirit right now? Can you just take a few more steps with me in the Holy Ghost? Without in the music, I just feel like somebody needs to stir themselves here the next few moments. Can you just stir yourself in the Holy Ghost? We're going to stay right here just a few more seconds. I know I got you guys lingering, but can you just pray in the Holy Ghost just for a little bit longer? Come on, I feel that. Why don't we begin to clap our hands? Don't stop praying, but just enter into a position of authority. Can you clap your hands and lift your voice? Come on, can we do that at one accord? Can you clap your hands, lift your voice? I just feel like somebody needs to lift up a shout of praise right now. In a one accord, can you walk into that authority, lift your voice, and just clap your hands? 
Everybody said amen. amen. Everybody said amen. 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 You may be seated in Jesus' name. God's plan for your city. Uh, been trying to figure some of this figure some of this out. Um, I've learned uh, that God is not only intentional, but He's strategic. And his patterns are made plain in the scriptures. You know, uh, for some reason, now, now again, just you guys are going to stay with me. I don't want to keep on saying that, so this is the last I'm going to say it. You guys are going to stay with me, and I believe that. Uh, For the longest time, uh, I've come to the reality that apostolics, Pentecostals in particular, we like to choose the methods and patterns uh, that we follow. We, you know, we, you know, baptism in Jesus' name, it is a pattern, it is a method that is laid out in the scripture. And so we, we, will, we will hold on to that. You know, we will hold on to methods and patterns of external holiness, how God expects us to live out in our conduct, in our dress, in our conversations, as the scripture would say it. Uh, but when it comes to strategies for church, for some reason, we think that we are exempt from being restrained to the patterns that are relayed in the scriptures. We kind of pick and choose where we want to go. Now, now that doesn't work well when we're dealing with denominal people. Uh, when we're dealing with denominal people, we, uh, and they tell us, well, this is my tradition, or this is what works, or this is what caters to people. Uh, we don't say that's okay. Uh, because we understand that the Bible is a life-giving source. And so if we're going to have life, we have to go to the life-giving source. Uh, But for some reason or another, when it comes to us, we will look at God. And when it comes to our strategies, when it comes to our patterns, when it comes to church growth, we will tell him, hey, listen, this is our tradition. This is how we've always done it. This is what caters to the people that we're serving. And I I don't think God has two different rules. I've learned this, that if it does not come from God, God has no reason to bless it. God first takes ownership of a thing before he blesses a thing. And what I've learned about apostolics, is this okay? Uh, I I say this often. uh, I I don't like getting amongst a group of people to talk about another group of people. And so for some reason, we like to get amongst ourselves and talk about Trinitarians. They're not here. So... (laughs) a bunch of apostolics here, so I'm going to talk to you guys. Uh, but but, but I, I have learned that for us, we have to wrestle with the reality that at times we have asked God to bless things that he does not own. Uh, this is why when, when they're looking to feed the multitude, the first thing that God does is he takes possession of it. If you consider it, he could have blessed the bread in the hands of the disciples but he takes it out of their hands before he blesses it because he has to own it. Once he owns it, he can bless it. Uh, This is why a lot of the things that we do are not blessed. God does not own it. It's not his. It's not his strategy. It's not his system. It's not, it's, it's the craziest things we will run is I'm not going to ask that. I'm going to ask if this is okay, but I'm just going to go ahead. Amen. Uh, we, will, we will run systems and strategies, and we'll have conferences for these things, and none of them are biblically based. We'll pull from data, and I have no issue being data-informed, but we have to be spirit-led. But we will, we, will, we will get into this thing, well, this new book said this, or you know, I heard this YouTube preacher said this, and we'll kind of pull from that. But if God does not own it, he cannot bless it. Amen. Amen. And I want our efforts to be blessed of God. The reason why I want our efforts to be blessed of God, because until it is blessed, it cannot be multiplied. Amen. Amen. We cannot grow outside of the blessing of God, because in the blessing of God is the DNA of multiplication. In the blessing of God is the DNA of multiplication. That's why you need God to take ownership of everything, everything in your life. You need God to take ownership of your mind. You need God to take ownership of your mind. Because that's where the kingdom gets in. Because if the kingdom can get in that, then multiplication can take place. Now, uh, working through this, 
uh, I've come to terms with that I don't want to waste my time. I don't want to waste my time. Uh, because if you are doing something, if you are working in ways that is outside of the principles, the systems of God, you're wasting your time. You're wasting your time. Matter of fact, I would be nervous if God is allowing something to grow that he does not own. Are you hearing me? I I would be nervous that if God actually lets you get to the place where you can violate his principles, but you still seem to grow. It's a dangerous place to be. And so because of that, I've committed. I want to know the patterns of the scripture. Uh, Can I tell you, don't only go to the Bible for doctrine. Go to the Bible for patterns. There is a pattern on how to raise your family. There's a pattern on how to handle your money. There's a pattern on how to conduct yourself in relationships. There is a pattern. And as apostolics, we have restricted ourselves to only how we conduct ourselves in church. Is this okay? I'm not asking that again. Next time I ask that, you just... (laughs) Uh, So... Uh, when it comes to this, you guys don't have the luxury, most of you guys. Uh, how many of you guys come to churches, uh, come from churches that are larger than 100 people? Okay, awesome, awesome. You guys don't have the luxuries that other, ple- uh, that other people, other places have. Because what can happen, here's what can happen. You can be blessed of God, you can grow, and then you can deviate. Right. And it takes time for you to tell. That God has actually left. Because once you start growing, you then think growth is the identifying factor that God is there. But the residue of blessing takes some time before it spoils. This is why, it, you know, I'm not going to, we're going to be okay. It's, a pro, it's okay, I'm okay. Uh, I'm, I'm from Florida. Amen. Somebody said amen. Are you from Florida? Praise God. Praise God. Uh, I've seen Florida has been in uh, in a great season. And uh, I think I think this is recorded. So if I get in trouble, forgive me. Florida has been in a great season. When I first got into church, uh, I remember there was a camp we had. I still remember Brother Campatella preached the camp. Brother Campatella preached the camp. I remember um, uh, uh, Brother Herring lived in the area at the time. He just came to work the altars. And there was a few, I mean, you could imagine, you know, that's, that's a powerful camp. Um, I remember just, just to work the altars, you know, I, every once in a while he grabbed the mic during the altar call, say something, it would just explode. We, you know, they would have to, they would have to shut the sanctuary down because we'd be in there for three, four hours at a time. Uh, it was, you know, they, they, they had to, they couldn't let us get to the sanctuary too early because we were fighting to get inside of there. You know, we, I remember one service, we had kitchen staff running, uh, running to the building. The kitchen staff and the kitchen was separate from the sanctuary. They were running to the sanctuary because they stepped out of the kitchen. They saw smoke coming from the sanctuary, and they thought there was a fire. Um, it, was, it, was, it was a powerful time. Out of that camp, I remember counting just a few years ago, man, there was probably like 15, 20 preachers that came out of that camp. Um, some of them worked in various levels. Some of them serve on the youth team. Some of them are pastoring now. Some of them are missionaries. Um, some of them are overseas. Uh, we were in a really good season, uh, and I'm going to be really, I'm going to be honest and bold. Uh, during that season, uh, th- the Lord had blessed us with uh, some elders who had apostolic anointings on their life. They were gifted to be apostles to various regions in Florida. And uh, uh, one, one in particular, one in particular, a prophet called him. Uh, I believe, I won't say the guy's name, but a prophet called him, and he said, uh, uh, God, God is wanting to visit Florida. And he said, he said, God is wanting to visit Florida the way he wanted to visit Texas. And he said, uh, I don't know if anybody's ever heard this prophecy before, but he said, but, he said uh, but when God wanted to visit Texas, his people weren't ready, so the revival went to the Charismatics. I'm, I'm just going to be obedient, so whatever happens with this, happens with this. But uh, uh, I've seen something occur because Florida started to grow. I'm, you know, uh, revival just started breaking out. There's various aspects of Florida. You know, you have the west side of Florida. You have the south side of Florida. And uh, there was some transition that took place uh, because we're so, listen, politics is hell's uh, lens to obscure your vision on the field. 
This is why every four years, like, like we forget elections happen. Every four years, we get lost in politics. And it's just a lens so you get distracted from what's happening spiritually. And uh, a few years ago, the, uh, you know, COVID took place. And, and I, I'm not concerned about what's happening politically. I, I want to know what's happening spiritually. There was this mass migration from the north to the south. Uh, I don't know if you know this, but states like Florida, Texas, Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, probably even in this region, uh, uh, the, uh, the populations just started to grow. And the Holy Ghost spoke to me. The Holy Ghost told me I'm trying to give them a chance to be saved. You know why some of you felt convicted when I said that? Because you fell asleep lulled by politics. Why? All these liberal people moving into my city. All these people who don't vote like me moving into my town. Missing the whole objective of the kingdom. But the Holy Ghost is going to help us. Amen. So uh, when this began to occur, uh, there was a transition that happened in my state in particular. And I pray the Lord will help us to kind of overcome some of these stuff, some of these things. But I remember, uh, I, I can tell you to the day. When I pulled into a specific region, I pulled into a specific region of our state, and it, it hit me because I felt it before, and I was like, this feels like Dallas. Uh, and, 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 and there's nothing wrong. There's a lot of powerful people in Dallas. I'm not, not, not discrediting the apostolics that are in Dallas. But what I felt specifically was I felt a charismatic spirit. I want to be very clear what that is. Uh, 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 you, you, you will see this. This happens in the book of Acts. If you guys ever examine the passage, if you, if you ever examine the passage of Scripture where Peter uh, is in prison, and the Bible says that, uh, uh, that, that the people of God were praying, uh, but I believe it was Agrippa uh, or, or, or one of the leaders said that, hey, we're going to release him. And the point of them releasing him is that they were going to release him so then that they can kill him. It was a false deliverance. Are, are you, he was going to get out of prison anyway, but it was only going to be for a season he was going to die. That is a charismatic spirit. It is a false deliverance. They weren't going to kill him in prison. He was supposed to leave prison, then go to his death. But the church intervened before that false deliverance. A charismatic spirit is a spirit that moves into a place or a space that gives the perception of deliverance. But it has no longevity to it. And so uh, I saw this kind of taking place and it concerned me. It concerned me. I say all that to say this. You better be careful that once we start growing, we don't become comfortable. Because the residue of blessing will stay there for a long time. And you'll feel justified in what you're doing. Uh, and and, 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 and I, I say that, I say that, just, just put that in your back pocket. Because there'll, there'll be a time when we'll start growing and things will start moving. And, 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 and there'll be something in you that'll reason just to say, well, what if we just let up just a little bit? And you never let up with standards. You let up with spiritual disciplines. That's the first thing that always goes. You know, I've never seen a church let up on standards first. They let up on prayer time. It's all of a sudden, kids, can, can I tell you this? You can, hear most of you guys who come to churches that there's not over 100 people, you don't have the talent to make up for what you don't do in prayer. You, 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 can't, you can't run tracks and have three guitar players and three piano players. And if the Holy Ghost is going to move in your worship service, somebody's praying. Amen. Amen. Sometimes you only got one worship leader and she might not even know how to sing on key. It's just, if somebody's going to get the Holy Ghost, somebody was praying. But, 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 but if we're honest as Pentecostals, we've learned to manufacture the noise of Pentecost without any power. The blessing that you have is you can't fake it. It's there or it's not there. All right, let's move forward a little bit. So, so, so in this, I, I, I am determined, number one, because I want to be saved. I think hell is real. I think hell is real. I think the greatest mistake we've ever done is stop preaching about hell. Uh, but uh, I, I want to I understand God's pattern. I want to understand God's blueprint. 
for how he conducts himself in cities. Now, now I'm going to take some time. I'm going to walk through this. I need you to get this because we have become obsessed with church. Now, uh, uh, church is a good thing. Uh, coming together is a good thing. But we teach people how to do church. I was overseas one time, and it broke my heart because uh, it, was, it was in this region that has a lot of potential. But they were acting just like us. They were learning how to do American church. And that's what we were exporting. We weren't exporting discipleship. We weren't exporting spiritual dominion. We were exporting good church. And this is how we measure success. How good was the church service? Not who changed, not who was delivered, not who was set free. Not if demons were cast out. How good was the church service? And so I want to help you to understand that our objective is not good church. God didn't do all of this just so you can get goosebumps once a week. But there's a plan to this. There's a plan to this. I want to tell you that the plan, God's final plan is God wants dominion. God wants dominion. God wants dominion for your city. Everybody say my city. Now, we're going we're gonna to go through this a little bit. Uh, we're going to go through this a little bit. So uh, let's go. Let's go to Genesis chapter. Let's go to Genesis chapter 2. Genesis chapter 2. I thank you for your maturity. I, I, I feel your connection to this. Uh, Genesis chapter 2. And, and I want to start with verse 23, because I want to, I want to explain some things. Uh, and, Adam say, and Adam said, this is now, everybody say this, bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. And she shall be called woman, because she was taken out of man. Now, now uh, this, is, this is the creation of Eve. Eve's, Eve's creation is unique from all other creations. Because Eve is the first thing that is created out of an already existing thing, out of a living thing. Adam's created from the ground. The other beasts are created from the ground. Other creation is just spoken into existence. But Eve is created out of Adam. Okay. And we understand Eve to be a reflection of the New Testament church. We understand that? I don't think I have to get into that. But the first man, Adam, being Adam. The second, Adam being who? The second man, Adam, being who? Jesus. And so the bride of Jesus, the wife of Jesus, what is born out of bone of his bone, taken from his rib, is the church. Amen. So uh, the reason why this is important is because although Adam calls Eve Eve, what does God call Eve? God calls Eve Adam. You understand this? Now, I'm not making this up. Go read your Bible. In Genesis chapter 1, he said, he said, he called their name. Adam. Now, now this should make sense to you because the name of the church is identified as Jesus. Some of you guys are catching up. Amen. Uh, name of the church is identified as, uh, as, 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 as Jesus. Now, where, where the distinction comes in, I need you to, I need you to see this because this is going to make sense as we move. Where the distinction of this comes in, where you get Adam and Eve, where a separate name comes in, is actually post-fall. Sin creates two different identities between the bride and the groom. Are you seeing this? The bride doesn't exist with a separate name until the fall. When the fall comes into place, now she's called Eve. She's no longer referred to as Adam. She has her own identity. We've got caught up in, 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 in trying to deal with uh, with, with, with doctrinal wolves, and that's good, but we have allowed some cultural wolves to enter the church. Um, because, because in our rejection of submission, biblical submission, and family structure, we have accepted the reality that brides and grooms can exist with two separate identities. And we think that that's just happening in local families, but that's not the case. That is reflective of the condition of the church. We have a separate identity from Jesus. 
We don't identify with him. And if you want to know where this is seen so clearly, this is when these demons are trying to get cast out by some pseudo disciples. And they say, listen, Paul, I know Jesus, I know. But who are you? There's this oneness that takes place. And in this oneness, the objective of God through Adam and Eve or just Adam, male and female, this oneness that would take place. This is what we're supposed to be with God. This oneness that would take place. The objective of God is always going to be two things. Number one, it's going to be people. and It's going to be a place. God's covenant with his people will always include people and will always include a place. It will always. This is the first covenant that God makes with Adam. And she says, listen, I want you to be fruitful and multiply people. Yes. Subdue the earth and have dominion over it. Place. Yes. It's nothing to do with church. Right. It has to do with a group of people. And it has to do with a place. Uh, the reason why this is important is because God has a people for you. Yes. And God has a place for you. Right. So I kind of want to walk through this a little bit. Uh, uh, this, is, this is important. The reason why I start off with Abraham is because you are required to have the faith of Abraham. And the faith of Abraham is exempted. Uh, really, Abraham is an Old Testament representation of an apostle. You can kind of see this. He's the first one to go out. He's the first one to take territory. He's the first one to go into a region. He's, he's, he, 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 is, he is sent out by God. God tells him, hey, I want you to go. And what does he tell him? I want you to go. I want you to go, and there's going to be a place. But not only is there going to be a place, there's also going to be a people. So, so how does hell deal with this reality? You're going to see this over and over again. Hell deals with this reality by trying to give us a pseudo-promise. And that is seen in religion. Because religion will help to satiate you enough. That you will be content without a people and you'll be content without a place. You know, we, don't, we, don't, we don't really have to have what God. What do you think Pharaoh represents? Pharaoh is a God. He is an Egyptian God. And when it's time for them to go find their place and it's time for them to go find a people to multiply in a land that belongs to them. The first thing that Pharaoh tries to do, Pharaoh tries to tell him, do you really have to worship like that? He's offering them an easy religion. Our issue as apostolics, it's not the world, it's our religious ways. Because I can't tell you, the thing that stops us the most is a good time in church. Apostolics, listen, if God doesn't show up, we will pray, we will fast. I mean, you, you really, if you ever hear the story of a man of God who's ever done anything, they always do it in a desperate place. Nothing's moving. Nothing's working. But what happens is if you get enough religion, you'll say, well, this is okay. You know how many times I've gone to places and I'll ask, how many of you guys have ever taught a Bible study in the last six months? Nobody will raise their hand. You know what we don't even ask anymore? When's the last time a devil's been cast out in your church? We just kind of stay away from it. When's, when's, when's the last time somebody's been delivered in your church from drugs and addiction? Because we've become content with just religion. So uh, what, 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 what is God trying to do? God has to pull Abraham out of religion. How do we know this? Because what is Abraham's dad's vocation? He's an idol maker. God has to pull Abraham out of religion. You know what I found? The hardest thing to pull you out of is not sin. The hardest thing to pull you out of is religion. You you asked an evangelist. The sinner will pray through in a moment. It's the religious that will stop the flow of God. When we gather together in a conference, it's not the backslider who's trying to make their way in that will stop the flow of the Holy Ghost. 
It's not the person who's bound by drug and addiction who will stop the flow of the Holy Ghost. It's the religious that'll just say, hey, just preach a cute message, give us 30 minutes, a five-minute altar call, and that'll be good. It is harder to pull you out of your religion than to pull you out of sin. That's why God has to look at Abraham and says, get out of that country. You have to get out of your religion. The best thing that could happen to some of you is that you don't go to a big church. Because you're not obligated to follow the structures and the restraints of religion. Where we do three songs and we do an offering and then that's it. And we get excited because there's 200 of, of us. But there's 2 million in the surrounding nation or city that we're in. The best thing that God can do to you is to pull you out of a religious place and into a barren place where you have to seek him for yourself. So, so Abraham's pulled out of religion. Now, this is the DNA of God. This is the DNA of God. Abraham is sojourning. He's moving from one place to another, never, never, never staying. He's moving from one place to another. Now, as Abraham is doing this, what you'll find is as Abraham moves, the Holy Ghost moves with Abraham. As Abraham moves, the Holy Ghost moves with Abraham. We've, we, we, we've got caught up in preaching this thing. That if we'll stay in a sanctuary and pray hard in a sanctuary, that somehow what's in here is going to flow out there. That's not how this is going to happen. The river is not restricted to an altar. Amen. The river's inside of you. He said, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. As you move, the Holy Ghost should be moving. As you walk, the Holy Ghost should be walking. The river should be in you. Amen. 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 So Abraham is sojourning. Now, now what you see in Abraham is not just completed in Abraham. This moves to other men. This will move to Moses. We've already talked about him. Moses deals with the religion that, of his day. He has to be removed out of the house of Pharaoh. But then you, the completion of this is really going to be seen with Joshua. Joshua is the one who actually gets the chance to go in. Now, what you'll see is that this is generational. God does not accomplish this in one generation. He does this in a multi-generational facet. One, I, one generation never gets something done for the kingdom. God is multi-generational. You know, we've lost that in the apostolic church. We, you, I, I, crazy, I've heard, crazy thing I ever heard. I was listening to this Jewish guy talk about a synagogue. And uh, uh, he was relaying to me how much people we had in the synagogue. And I was expecting him to tell me, we have, tell me, uh, you know, we have 500 people. That's what I was expecting. And he said, we have 75 families. Did you catch that? That blew my mind. I was, I was like, well, how many people, you, you know, how many people go there? He said, we have 75 families. Because in his mind, he's not counting individuals. He's counting families. We have bought into the lie that God is trying to do an individual work. God is trying to do a generational work. And this is for you and to your children. We'll get into that later, but, but, but here's what I want you to catch. This is generational. So this, this, this needs to be grasped because what God does in a region is never restricted to one generation. You will have generational leadership. You'll have apostles that will go for this is why uh, this is why. Can I tell you this? We have to redefine what success looks like sometimes. Is this OK? Can I encourage somebody? Because we will send a man to a place and they'll stay there for 30 years and they won't have a big church and we'll deem it a failure. This is and, and what we didn't know the whole time is they were serving as an Abraham. Because Abraham never saw a nation come into existence. But if he did not go, Joshua would have nothing to conquer. And, 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 and here's the frustrating, I'm not going to ask. Here's the frustrating thing in this day and age. We have preachers that want to be celebrities. They don't want to find God and be used of him. Because sometimes that means, can I tell you this? We need to stop associating glory with glamour. It's not the same thing. It's not the... When, 
Is, is it okay for God to send you to a city and nobody knows your name, but you accomplish something in the Holy Ghost? This is, this is where we miss it. Because when God is speaking to Moses and Moses says, hey, show me your glory. What does God tell him? I have to hide you in the cleft of the rock. We don't experience glory because we're not okay being hidden. We want to be seen. I want people to see me. Can I tell you what's stopping the flow of the Holy Ghost in your city? It's you. Because you want everybody to know that if God gives you a building, everybody has to know that God gave you the building. If he gives you authority over drugs and addiction, everybody has to know. But you can get so desperate that you say, God, whether you do it through me or not, praise God, I need you to do something in my city. They don't have to know my name. They don't have to know it came from me. Just do it. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. And it, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. It takes time to get there. I'm not going to lie to you. You know, you first get in this thing and you want to be noticed. You want everybody to see you. Amen. And God will hold you if you're, if you're, if you're lucky enough. If you're blessed enough, God will hold you in a place where your spirit won't be satisfied with conferences. I get tired. Can I just be honest? I get tired of our obsessions with conferences where we're so excited of who's numbered amongst ourselves. And we get to create hierarchies and look at that man. He's all the way up there. And one day I'll be able to step over all my brothers and get up there sooner or later if you'll stay at the altar he'll put something in you that says God I don't need to be seen hide me in the cleft of the rock just let your glory pass on by. Praise God. Ah, yeah, love this. can I tell you this can I tell you this we're not ready for revival unless God can bring it to your city but use another pastor to do it I, listen, I know, I know, I know what we think. We, I, we think because we have UPC slapped on our church. I love the organization that God is going to do it through us and only with us. But you're not ready for a harvest unless God can convert the Lutheran church and they have more apostolics in their building than you have in your building. Are we trying to grow the kingdom or do we want to fill a building? Which one is it? Amen. So, so here it is. Here it is that with Joshua, they get to go in and elders, elder, I don't know if there's many elders here. Praise God. I don't want to call anybody. Oh, that might be offensive, you know. You might just look older than you actually are. Uh, uh, but, 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 <laughs> but to those who, 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 who fall in the category of elders, because elder is not just we kind of use that to describe an age, but it's not just an age. It's actually a spiritual office. Uh, but but, but, but I, need you to be, I need you to hear me. You need to be okay with laying down a groundwork that you're not going to see finalized. Uh, it's, it's, you, you need to be okay. And, and somebody, somebody who's not in this building who's listening to this, you need to be okay that you labored in that church for 30 years and nothing happened. But the guy you're going to turn it over to is going to take it to another level. You, 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 you need to be okay. Can I tell you what's happening in this region? Can I tell you what's happened in this region? We have some elders, I love you and we love you, that you need to become secure in the fact that your time was not wasted time. You were just laying a foundation. The person coming behind you is not better than you. It's not that they're smarter than you. They're just standing on your shoulders. We thank you for your sacrifice, but we need to be okay for this to be a generational thing. Don't, don't, don't kill, don't kill, I'm laughing, 
because you're, you're a bishop. Uh, anyways, how do you say that? But uh, uh, he, didn't, he, he didn't tell me anything. I'm going to say that much. But, but I need you to get this. I need you to get this. It might be that you're just laying a foundation. You might just be Abraham. You, you, you're not going to see it. You, you, yeah, right. Just Abraham. You might just be Abraham. <laughs> is, is that okay? Is that okay with you? You might just be Abraham. So, so Joshua comes in. And Joshua, can I, can I also put it this way? Joshua is not so ignorant to think that this occurred because of him. That we, I, man, I got, look, look, look at us. Now we're that church. We can, we can dismiss, and, and some of you guys, why is he talking this way? There's, there's not that many pastors in the building. If you're saying that, you have no spiritual insight. Because I'm talking, I'm trying to give keys to leaders that don't even know what they're going to be leading here over the next few years. You have to have enough sense that when you outgrow your mother church, that you didn't get there because you're better than your bishop. Is that okay? So here it is. Let me talk to you, some of you younger guys. That when it's time to conquer, Joshua is living under the shadow of Moses. He understands this. And Joshua goes in to take terror. Now, now here's what you have to get. Remember our patterns, principles, strategies. Uh, uh, we have preached spiritual dominion <laughs> exempt from spiritual warfare. It does not exist. It does not exist. Okay. If, if you're, and I'm going to say this again. If you're growing in an area that you have not conquered, it's because you're enslaved. The children of Israel grew under Egypt. They just never grew to the place of dominion. That's not my words. That's Pharaoh's words. Pharaoh said, hey, listen, they're grown, but we can't let them grow so much that they overtake us. Do you know that hell has a capacity for your church? Well, you, we say stuff like, well, hell won't give up one soul. Yeah, he will. Hell has a capacity for your church. He's okay if you hit 120, as long as you stay at 120. Because you can't conquer at 120. But the second you start talking about 500, then they could overtake us. So, so here it is. Joshua's getting ready to go in. Uh, and the reason why I have to bring this into the context, because one generation is a sojourning generation. Their objective is to wander. And if you, if, you, if you ask the elders of this region what they felt like they were doing, they were just wandering. They were starting churches in places where nobody was showing up to. They were preaching to congregations that had been the same for the last 15 years. Felt like they were going in circles. We're just wandering. But establishing a blueprint. But when Joshua comes into the picture, it goes from sojourning to conquering. Now, now why does it take place? Because the promise that God gave Abraham was dictated on a people already being there. Do you know there are seasons and times to God giving us dominion? To us taking dominion? God waited till everything got positioned right. So that Joshua can come on the scene. And when Joshua came on the scene, God said, all right, it's time now. What Moses didn't see, what Abraham didn't see, what Isaac didn't see, what Jacob didn't see. I want you to see. But here's what you have to understand. If Joshua misses the moment, God will do it through somebody else. And, and, and I'm going to tell you what I felt just, just here, and I'm going to tell you what I, what I felt just in traveling this, this region. Uh, I'm not going to ask. The, you, you guys, I love you, but you guys are so caught up on trying to be like Texas and Louisiana. We, we want to be as good as the other districts. 
We want to be like the other districts. We want our camps to be like the other districts. We, we want to, and, and, and here's the issue. While you're trying to be like them, you're missing what God has for you. We, we want to make sure we measure up. We got the same music. We got the same talent. We got the same skills. And can I tell you this? Can I just rip this bandage off? This region will never be like any other region. Can, 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 I, can I also put it this way? You need to be okay with the assignment that God has given this region. And, 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 let, and that, just before you clap, before you clap, let me speak to South Dakota specifically. You need to be okay with the assignment God has given this state. Because during worship, what I felt was phenomenal. But, 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 but what you have to be careful is, is that you get to the place and you say, man, finally, we got the liberty they got. Finally, we feel what they feel. Finally, we got the service. The evangelists want to come to our state just like they want to go to their. You better be careful because because th then what happens is, man, we're just like them. And that's great. They're doing what they have to do. But what does God ask you to conquer? Yeah. And, and, and here's the issue. When God's asked this place to be an Antioch. When God's asked this place to be a training ground for prophets and apostles, is it okay that our church services are structured differently? Is it okay that we don't always do everything that everybody else is doing? That, that, that youth pastor, God might have to give you a strategy that looks different than the strategy that's in Georgia and Florida. Can I tell you, can I tell you why some of you guys have been so frustrated? Because you feel like, man, I just feel like my timing is right now, but it's not working because you're trying to be like everybody else. You, 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 and if you realize what Joshua does, Joshua never goes into battle without asking God, God, how do you want us to go about this? How are we going to conquer this? How are we going to, how are we going to produce this? How, how do you want us to go into this fight? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to close here in the next few minutes, uh, but I want to speak. I want to speak just, I'm no longer going to stay in the text. I want to come to this, this place and come to this place. Um, there, there, there are things. That God will allow to sit beneath the surface for a long time. I'll never say anything about it. Nobody will know it's there. They'll overlook it. It's like an Ephesus moment. Where Paul is speaking in Corinth. He says, listen, I need to go to Ephesus. Because there's a great and effectual door there. And, and, and we don't realize what that great and effectual door is. Because the Bible said through Ephesus, what happens? All of Asia heard the gospel. Do, do you understand that? One city had the capacity to open up a continent. And he says, listen, there's great adversaries there. So the spirit world knew that that door was there, but nobody else could see it. But Paul said, I have need. I got I got to go to Ephesus because there's a great and effectual door. You know what I've learned about your region is that you think it has to do with your city and your state. And you don't realize what you do when your region affects continent. Can I tell you why you guys don't have populations of three, five, seven millions in one city? Because God will allow you to conquer 20, 30, 40,000 people like that so you can then focus on countries. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Are you, are you hearing what I'm saying? Because what, what, what happens when you already have dominion over your city and you've already conquered your city? You then can focus on missional work that goes beyond the bounds of your walls. And, and, and the whole time you're trying to figure out, man, there's nobody here. How are we going to get this done? God's saying you missed the fact that there's a great and effectual door in your city. 
There's things tied to your city that if you break open in your city, it'll affect the northeast. There's things tied to your city. You'll never go there. But in the spirit world, what you open up in your city will affect a whole different region. I want us all to stand. We're going to do something here. I just want you to pray right where you are. I just want you to pray right where you are just for a few more moments. I feel offices lingering over people right now. I feel offices lingering over people right now. I feel five-fold ministry offices lingering over people right now. I feel prophetic offices. Brother Wade, I feel it so strong. I feel the office of a prophet lingering over people right now. We're about to go somewhere in the Holy Ghost that you didn't realize we can even go to. The insecurity that has, that has gotten this region restrained and restricted is about to come off. We're going to stop trying to be like everybody else and have conferences like everybody else and do what everybody else is doing. But there's about to be a releasing. I don't know why I feel this, but I feel like a school of prophets is getting ready to be birthed in this region. It's been trying to break loose for some time. But you've been so caught up on looking like everybody else. But I feel the Holy Ghost getting ready to deliver you from the opinions of everybody else and what everybody else has to say and how they feel about us. And does our church measure up? I feel the restraints coming off. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. Lift your voice just for a little bit. I need every young man to rush to this altar right now and get on your face. There's an anointing that's getting ready to fall on you. There's an anointing that's getting ready to fall on you. If you have a family, every young lady, I need you to find your place up here. If you want what's in this altar, I don't care who you are. I need you to come down here quickly. Ayala masana masana.